OK, let's take a look at the homework. Please turn to page five. Number three, Bogota, which is the capital of Colombia, is a cosmopolitan city. Do you need commas? Yes. Because Bogota is the capital of Colombia. These two things are the same thing. The middle part is extra information. So one comma here. And one comma here before the main verb. Question four. The city that is the capital of Colombia is a large cosmopolitan city. Do you need commas? No. You cannot add this kind of comma in front of that. Number five, South Beach, which is clean, pleasant and fun, is known as a party town, commas. Yes. Here. And here before the main verb. Six, the name Bogota comes from the word Bacata, which was the Indian name for the site. Comma, yes, just before the which. Here the word Indian means uh, Aboriginal indigenous people, native people. Number seven, the person who writes the best essay will win a prize, commas, no. Eight. The first prize was given to Belinda Jones, who wrote a touching essay about being an adopted child, comma. Yes. After the name. In this situation, there is only one person named Belinda Jones, so the rest is extra information. Number nine. On our trip to Africa, we visited Nairobi, which is near several fascinating game reserves, and then traveled to Egypt to see the pyramids. Commas? Yes. Before the which? And before the and. Um, let's see, hang on. Uh, Personally, I would also add a comma after Africa. Though it's not related to the relative clause. Number 10, to see wild animals, you have to fly to a city that is near a game reserve and then take a small plane to the reserve itself. Commas? No, you cannot add this kind of comma before that. Um, but again, personally, Oh, no, 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 that this sentence is good. This sentence is good. Number 11, someone who understands physics better than I do is going to have to help you. Commas? No. You need to explain the kind of person that this someone is. So it is not extra information. It is essential information. Number 12, violent tropical storms that occur in Western Asia are called typhoons. Commas? No. 13, similar storms that occur on the Atlantic side of the Americas are called hurricanes rather than typhoons. No commas for the same reason. Use of the word that. 14, a typhoon, which is a violent tropical storm, can cause great destruction. Commas? Yes. A violent tropical storm. This is simply explaining what a typhoon is. It's extra information. Even if we don't have this part, we know what it is talking about simply from the word typhoon. So it is extra information. You need to add a comma here. And before the main verb phrase here. 15, according to the news report, the typhoon that threatened to strike the Indonesian coast has moved away from the land and toward open water. No commas. 
And 16, Hurricane Katrina, which destroyed parts of New Orleans, occurred in 2005. Commas? Yes, there is only one hurricane named Katrina. The middle part is extra information. So before the which and before the main verb. Questions about this page? All right, moving on. Page six, five mistakes. Last week in my psychology class, we took a personality test. Which? Or that, either one is fine. A test is not a person, you cannot use who. Which or that it is designed to determine what kind of person you are. The test, which I found interesting, cannot use that after this kind of comma, which I found interesting, took a couple of hours to complete. Today I got my results, which were pretty much what I expected. I have many friends who or that, because in the middle sentence, it is the subject. The verb is mean. These friends mean a lot to me, so you cannot use the word whom for the subject. It has to be who or that. I have many friends who mean a lot to me, so it's not surprising that I'm classified as an extrovert. I would recommend that everyone who, sorry, everyone who or that wants to find out more about himself or herself should take a test like this. That's five, right? All right, great. Questions about these five? Uh, you cannot omit this one because it is the subject of both sentences. Everyone is the subject at, within the that noun clause, and it is the subject of wants to find out more. You can only omit if it is the uh, object of the inside sentence. OK, uh, second half. Add commas, change to that if possible. Interesting. OK, number three. The Mississippi River, which flows south from Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico, is the major commercial river in the United States. Commas? Yes, there's only one Mississippi River. You are adding extra information into the sentence. So comma here. And then before the main verb clause, a uh, verb phrase. Can you change the which to that? No, because it comes after this kind of comma. Four, a river which is polluted is not safe for swimming. Commas? No, you are adding essential information about this kind of river. Can you change the which to that? Yes, it is a thing and it is not after this kind of comma. You can use the word that. Number five, Mr. Trang, whose son won the spelling contest, is very proud of his son's achievement. Oh, we have a second sentence. OK, let's let's take a look at uh, the first sentence first. Commas. Yes, there is only one Mr. Trang. Comma here. Comma here. Can you change this to that? No, because it is of the person. Uh, that can only replace things and it cannot be genitive, soil good, cannot be possessive. So you can't change this to that. Second sentence The man whose daughter won the science contest is also very pleased and proud. Commas? No. You need to add extra. You need to add essential information about the man. Otherwise, we don't know which man you're talking about. And for the same reason as the previous sentence, you, this cannot be changed to that. 
Number six, goats, which were first tamed more than 9,000 years ago in Asia, have provided people with milk, meat, and wool since prehistoric times. Commas? Yes. Okay, so as I, as I keep saying, grammar creates your situation. If you do not add commas, that means that you are talking about goats which were first tamed more than 9,000 years ago. You're talking about 9,000 year old goats, which is not true. What you're actually talking about is the kind of animal called goats. So it's not like there's a group of goats and you have to add this essential information to pick out which goats. You're saying there's a kind of animal called goats and this animal was first tamed more than 9,000 years ago. So you do need to add commas. Adding a comma here and here tells the reader that you know the kind of animal that I'm talking about. There's nothing special about this animal. I'm just giving you extra information. Number seven, Mrs. Clark has two goats. Wow, that's two more goats than most people have. She's furious at the goat which got on the wrong side of the fence and is eating her flowers. Comma. No comma, because you need the essential information to explain which goat. So can you replace the which with that? Yes, you can. Questions about these uh, five? All right, next page. Add commas. Pay attention to pauses. Interesting. We enjoyed the city where we spent our vacation. Comma. No, you need to add essential information so that we can understand what city you're talking about. So no comma. If you do add a comma, this means that this sentence appears in the middle of a conversation. We know what city the person is talking about. And in fact, the person is simply adding the extra information that they spent their vacation there. But as a standalone independent sentence, we have no idea, so there should not be a comma. Number two, we enjoyed Mexico City where we spent our vacation. Comma. Yes, there's only one Mexico City. Adding this information is not essential to helping us understand which Mexico City, because there's only one. This is extra information. So there should be a comma here. Number three, one of the elephants which we saw at the zoo had only one tusk, comma. Usually no. But again, if the context is we were already talking about a group of elephants and you mentioned that there's one elephant that you saw at the zoo, then you would add a comma. But as an independent sentence, no commas. Number four, one of the most useful materials in the world is glass, which is made chiefly from sand, soda, and lime. Comma. Yes, it is talking about the material glass. Nothing special, it's just this kind of material, and then it is giving us extra information. This, uh, the, this part is not essential to helping us understand what kind of glass it is. This is how you make most kinds of glass. Now, this set of questions asks us to read the sentences aloud, and it's true. Whether or not you add commas will change the way that you read the sentence. For example, this sentence. 
if we add a comma, it is missing a comma. So let's put that comma in and the sentence will sound like this. One of the most useful materials in the world is glass, which is made chiefly from sand, soda and lime. But if you don't add the comma, you're saying it's a special kind of glass, then you would read the sentence like this. One of the most useful materials in the world is glass, which is made chiefly from sand, soda and lime. So there, there are two main differences. First, if there is a comma here, you would pause. And if there is no comma, you just keep going. But there's also a second difference. If there is a comma, we would de-emphasize the relative pronoun. Because it's not important. We already paused. Uh, you know that it's not essential information, so we de-emphasize this word. But if you don't add a comma, then it is essential. It's telling you that what I'm going to say is important to understanding the meaning. So it would be, is glass which is made chiefly? But if you add the comma, is glass which is made chiefly? Can you hear the difference? Glass which is made chiefly or glass which is made chiefly. There's a, a difference in intonation. So when you're talking with somebody, you can actually hear which kind of relative pronoun they are using, a uh, relative clause that they are using. Number five, you don't need to take heavy clothes when you go to Bangkok, which has one of the highest average temperatures of any city in the world. When I was reading that, did I add a comma? When you go to Bangkok, which has one of. Is there a comma there? Yes, there is. There's only one Bangkok, Mangu. So you add a comma before the relative pronoun. Number six, child labor was a social problem in late 18th century England, where, un uh, where employment in factories became virtual slavery for children. Comma? Yes, there is only one late 18th century England. So it is not essential information, it is extra information. So you add a comma here. Seven, we had to use a telephone, so we went to the nearest house. The woman who answered our knock listened cautiously to our request. The woman who answered our knock, comma? No comma, you need to explain essential information about the woman. And number eight, I watched the scientist conduct an experiment on bees. The research scientist who was, uh, who was wearing protective clothing before she stepped into the special chamber holding the bees was not stung. Let's take this sentence first. The research scientist who was wearing protective clothing, blah, 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 holding the bees was not stung. Commas? Yes. Add a comma here. And after the word bees. If this were a standalone sentence, then the middle part would be essential information. We need to know which scientist, but it's not. There is a preceding sentence. I watched a scientist, so this is the scientist that we're talking about. Therefore, in the second sentence, this part is just extra information. And the last sentence, a person who was unprotected by the special clothing could have gotten 300 to 400 bee stings within a minute. Comma, or sorry, commas. No, we need the middle part to understand what kind of person. The middle part is essential information. OK, do you have questions about these eight?
If you have questions, I suggest you ask them now instead of during the break because we have what eight pages. If you if you have eight pages of questions, it's going to take a long time, so you should ask questions now. OK, if not, let's look at page eight. Cross out the word that if possible. In other words, the shared noun in the inserted sentence. Is it a subject or an object? If it is an object, you can take out the word that. Number three, the fruit that I bought today at the market is fresh. Can we take it out? Yes, the middle sentence I is the subject. Therefore, the fruit must be the object. Therefore, you can take it out. Number four, my high school English teacher is a person that I will never forget. Can you take this out? Yes, you can. Again, the inserted part, I is the subject, therefore person must be the object. And so you can take out the word that. Number five, the puppy that barked the loudest got the most attention in the pet store. Can you take out the that? No, because the next word is a verb which means the word that, representing puppy, is the subject. You cannot take out the relative pronoun if it is the subject of the inserted sentence. Number six, the girl that is sitting in front of Richard has long black hair that she wears in a ponytail. Can you take out the that? No. The next word is a verb, so the that, which just means the girl, is the subject, and you cannot take out the subject. Questions? OK, moving on. Find and cross out the incorrect pronouns in the adjective clauses. Um, this just means relative clauses. Incorrect pronouns. OK, so there are extra pronouns. We have to cross them out. Number two, I like the shirt you wore to class yesterday. It means shirt. So in fact, there is a missing that here that has been omitted. That you wore to class. So the it is extra. Number two, Amanda Jones is a person I would like you to meet. This is extra. The missing that is here. Person that I would. Number three, uh, sorry, number four. The apartment we wanted to rent had two bedrooms. Again, you're talking about the thing at the beginning of the sentence. So there is a missing pronoun here that we wanted. Number five, my wife and I are sorry, my wife and I are really enjoying the TV set that we bought for ourselves last week. It just means that you already have a pronoun. You don't need the second pronoun. Number six, the woman you met at Aunt Martha's house is a pharmacist. Yao Ji Si. Do you have questions about these five? All right, let's keep going. Same thing again. Number two, the coffee that I drank was cold and tasteless. Number three, the tennis shoes I was wearing in the garden got wet and muddy. Tennis shoes just means uh, sports shoes, sneakers, running shoes. I'm not sure why we call them tennis shoes in English, but it's the name for this kind of shoe. Number four, my cousin Ahmed is a person I've known and loved since he was born. Number five, I have a great deal of respect for the wonderful woman I married 11 years ago. 
a great deal of just means a lot, a lot of. Number six, Anna has a cat that likes to catch birds. Number seven, the birds that Anna's cat catches are very frightened. Number eight, yesterday Anna rescued a bird that the cat had brought into the house. She set it free. It flew away quickly. Questions? All right, page nine. So we're looking for errors in adjective clauses, adjective phrases, or punctuation. Interesting. All right, number one. When we walked past the theater, we saw a lot of people waiting in a long line outside the box office. The box office is where you buy the tickets. Piaofang. So this should be a lot of people who were waiting and then who were has been omitted. Number two, students who live on campus are close to their classrooms and the library. Number three, if you need any information, see the librarian sitting at the central desk on the main floor. Who is sitting and then you omit who is sitting. Or you can say who sits, that's also fine. In fact, you can even say that sits because you can use the word that for people. Number four, my best friend is Anna, comma, whose, so you don't need the her, right? So whose birthday is the same day as mine. Number five, Hiroko was born in Sapporo, comma, which is a city in Japan. Number six, Patrick is my oldest brother. He's married and has one child. Number seven, the person, this should be sitting, sitting next to me is someone I've never met, period. Know him. This has to be present progressive, because it's talking about something that is happening right now. When we talked about the librarian, the librarian always sits at the central desk. So it doesn't matter whether the librarian is there right now. It is talking about a general situation. But in question seven, it is something that is happening right now. Therefore, it must be present progressive. Number eight, my favorite place in the world is a small city which is located, or you can simply say located, on the southern coast of Thailand. Number nine, Mr. Darnell was the only person that I wanted to speak to or to whom I wanted to speak. So that I wanted to speak to, who I wanted to speak to. No, you can't use who. Uh, the only, right? When the sentence has only one option or group, it has to be that. The, the highest, the best, the only. So the only person that I wanted to speak to. That's your only answer. You can't use to whom. Sorry. Uh, just move the two back to the end of the sentence. Hey.
Hang on, wait, wait, wait. OK. Yes, that's right. You can only use that. All right, number 10. There are 80 students from all over the world who study English at this school. I think the commas are fine, but you can also take them out. It the difference is very small. So what's for sure is you. Uh, OK, there are a number of answers to this. I'm going to type them out. OK, so here you can add these two commas or you cannot add these two commas. You can say who are from or you can take out the who are. And here you can say who study, who are studying or take out the who are and just leave studying. So you have uh, two, four times three, 12 options. Number 11. OK, wait, hang on. Number 10, we should explain these options, right? So if you have never heard of these students in your life, this is the first time you're hearing about them, you should not add the commas because the middle information will help you understand what kind of students we're talking about. But if it says this school, right? This school, so apparently you know the school. So if you know the school, you may know the students. You may know that this school takes students from around the world. If you know this, you should add the commas. Uh, because the middle part is just extra information. You already know what kind of students we're talking about. Now, if this school has a regular program where they take in students from around the world every year, you can use this, present tense. It's a general situation. It happens every year. But if it's only happening this time or you don't know whether it, it happens every year, you should use one of the answers with studying because it's talking about the situation right now. And then finally, whether you say who are from or from, the meaning is the same. But if the sentence has two uses of the word who, it can be a little confusing. So if you use who near the end, you should not use who are in the front. Uh, but if you don't use the word who, then you can choose whether you want to say who are. So, OK, do you understand what's going on here? OK, if you didn't catch that, you can go home and watch the YouTube recording. Number 11, the people who we met on our trip last May are going to visit us in October. You can say who, you can say whom, because this is the object of the inserted sentence. Number 12, Diane Baxter, comma, who used to teach Spanish, comma, has organized a tour of Central America for senior citizens. 
，帮我关一下前门。Number thirteen. I've met many people since I came here. Okay, this is this is interesting. The answer is, comma, some of whom are from my country. We talked about how if you use which or if you use whom after a preposition. Then when you move the pronoun to the front, the preposition comes along. But in this case, the word some also must come along because in terms of the syntax, the sentence structure, you cannot separate these two words. It's some of. Them, it's not some of them. Some of go together, it's one unit. So if you move the of, you also have to move the sum. So the answer is sum of whom. Fourteen, people can speak English. Sorry, people who can speak English can be understood in many countries. You can say people who, you can say people that. And 15, grandpa is getting married again. What a big surprise. Or I guess you can say again, comma, which is a big surprise. Questions? Page 10. Correct the errors. Ooh, it doesn't tell us what kind of errors. Interesting. OK, number one, baseball is the only sport in which I am interested. End of sentence. The in and the pronoun have been moved to the front. Right in it just means in which, so you don't need this part. Number two, my favorite teacher, Mr. Chu, was always willing to help me after class. Number three, it is important to be polite to people who live in the same building. Number four, my sister has two children whose names are Ali and Talal. Number five, he comes from Venezuela, Venezuela, comma, which is a Spanish speaking country. Number six, there are some people in the government who are trying to improve the lives of the poor because this who is a pronoun for people. Some people who. So this has to be R. Or you can just take out this part. There are some people in the government trying. Number seven, my classroom is located on the second floor of Carver Hill, comma, which is a large brick building in the center of the campus. Number eight, a myth is a story that or which expresses traditional beliefs. Or you can change expresses to expressing. Uh, and therefore you would be omitting that is expressing. Number nine, there is an old legend told among people in my country. The legend is the object. It is the people who are telling the legend. It is not the legend telling the people. So this has to be passive. That is told, told. About a man who lived, or that lived, in the 17th century 
and saved a village from destruction. I personally would add another that or who, whichever one you used before, uh, after man, just to emphasize that the subject is still outside of the relative clause. You have two relative clauses. We're going to talk about this today, right? The word and. You are connecting one relative clause with another relative clause. It's creating a it's creating a V shape, right? A man, and then the the upper half is who lived in the 17th century, and and then the bottom half is sa who saved a village from destruction. Actually, uh, let me let me type this out for you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? When in this sentence it says and, right? The word and is connecting these two relative clauses. So if you type, if you have a relative pronoun in the first one, it's a good idea to repeat that same pronoun in the second one just to remind the reader that we are still using relative clauses. We have not uh, ended this part of the sentence. We are not going back to the main sentence. Taobo. OK, uh, I think we'll, we're going to talk about this later today also. Number 10, an old man was fishing next to me on the pier. OK, an old man who was fishing or just fishing, you can take out who was. Or that was. On the pier, Mato was muttering to himself. Number 11, the road that we took. Through the forest. Was narrow and steep. Number 12, there are 10 universities in Thailand, seven of which. are located in Bangkok, comma, which is the capital city. Or after the comma, you can just say the capital city. So again, right, the preposition here goes with the number. You cannot separate the word seven and the word of. So you have to move the seven with the preposition to the front of this relative clause. 13, at the National Park, there is a path that leads to a spectacular waterfall. Or you can say there is a path leading to. Uh, or you can say which, right? Which leads. 14, at the airport, I was waiting for some relatives who, sorry, whom I had never met before. Whom? It's the object of the inserted sentence. 15. It is almost impossible to find two persons whose opinions are the same. Uh, if you want, you can change persons to people, but the word persons does exist. It just means individual, a multiple of an individual person. Uh, we usually see this in legal language. If you want to specify that you are talking about more than one individual person, you can say persons, one person at a time, but we talk about them together. 16. On the wall, there is a colorful poster which consists of a group of young people 
dancing or who are dancing or that are dancing. Consists of, which means that the second half makes up, sorry, the second part makes up the first part. Right, you know, like uh, uh, make up, constitute, comprise, consist, these kinds of words. Consists of is the bigger thing in front, the smaller thing behind. 大家前面小的在后面, Seventeen. The sixth member of our household is Pietro, comma, who is my sister's son, or you can simply say my sister's son. Eighteen. Before I came here, I didn't have the opportunity to speak with people um, for whom. English is their native tongue. So the original sentence inserted here is English is the native tongue for these people. Uh, and you are repeating people, right? So for these people, move the people to the front. The for also comes to the front. So for whom? OK, questions about this page? Right, so we're not done yet. Let's take a short break. After the break, we'll come back and keep discussing pages 11, 12, and 13. If you have not yet taken back your midterm exam, please come and see me. Please also give me the sign-in sheet.
All right, let's take a look at page 11. Eight mistakes in the use of adjective clauses and phrases. Uh, the first one has been done. Look for seven more. Do not change punctuation rate. OK, so the first one is here. Uh, I'm still having a hard time here in Los Angeles, but things are a little better than they were. I'm not quite as lonely as before because I've met some people in my neighborhood, many of whom, many of whom are friendly, but so far I don't know anyone really well. I do have some friends who are, wait, can we add words? Delete, change, add. Okay, yes, yes we can. Who are, or you can just take out who, from my classes at the university. Yeah, it says delete verbs. So we can't delete pronouns, so we cannot delete who. It has to be who are. Who are from my classes at the university. Most of whom. Are very interesting. I'm looking forward to getting to know them better as time goes on. The hardest thing is the food, most of which. I just don't like very much. It's difficult to find quality food that's not too expensive. I did do one really fun thing recently. One of my friends from school and I went to Universal Studios. We took a tram tour around the park and saw several actors working, some of whom I recognized. I felt like jumping off the tram and shouting, would everyone who or that or you can take out the is. Who is famous, that is famous, or just everyone famous? Please give me your autograph. Chimbi Chimbi. Universal is where the last Indiana Jones was filmed. You know, those movies starring Harrison Ford. Or you can add the word that. Those movies that starred. I've got to get back to studying. I can hardly wait to see you and the family in the summer. Email me, love Elena. Was that seven? Yeah, great. OK, we got them all. Uh, do you have questions about this page? All right, moving on. Page 12. Circle the correct answers. Number one, neither of whom, because it's after the preposition. Number two, whose classes? Number three, both of whom? Number four, neither of which? Number five, who are? Number six, Interest, sorry, interested in. A person is interested in something. Something is interesting to a person. So the subject is a person. You should say interested. Uh, number seven. Born. It should be who was born. Without the who, you can only say born. Number eight, including. We don't have a subject for the word includes. It should say which includes. Without the which, we can only say including. Questions about these eight? All right, find and correct five mistakes. Doesn't tell us what kind of mistakes. Newcomers to a country begin to suffer from culture shock, comma, often developing communication problems. This is 
a participial participial construction, 分词构句。Uh, you can change this in other ways. Uh, suffer from culture shock. You can say and often develop. This is using an idea that we will talk about today, using the coordinating conjunction. Um, yeah. Culture shock and often develop. Right, okay. They may be acquainted with many people, most of whom they were previously able to talk with easily. Now they find it difficult to talk to these people. Moreover, aspects of the new culture, most of which the subject is culture, it's not a person. Most of which used to seem interesting and exciting now begin to seem boring and unappealing. These newcomers may begin to experience negative emotions, including anger, hostility, DE, and depression. Fortunately, this is only a temporary attitude that is, or which is, soon replaced by gradual acceptance. Questions? All right, finally down to page 13, last page of the homework. 11 mistakes, the first one is already corrected. So five, uh, 10 mistakes related to adjective clauses, otherwise known as relative clauses. 10 of them, okay. Dear mom and dad, okay, wait, wait. The first one is corrected. Here it is. This is the first mistake. So we had something that we could talk about. Or you can say we had something about which we could talk. Since I'm still thinking about what my major is going to be, my advisor had me take one of those tests that show you what you're most interested in. You can say which show or that show. Also, technically, the correct way to spell advisor is ER. Uh, but most people spell it wrong today. It was called the strong interest test. I found out that I'm most interested in things involving being on the stage and performing in some way, which doesn't surprise me a bit. This is the sentence which. It's not replacing a noun. It is replacing the entire sentence. I always liked being in school plays, remember? So I signed up for two drama courses, which or that seem like they're going to be really interesting. My advisor also had me do one of those personality inventories that tell you, there's an extra they, that tell you what kind of person you are. This is something that is all new to me. OK, that's right. But I found out some things which or that are really interesting. According to the test I took, I'm a person who or that is classified as a type B person. I had no idea what that meant, but I've learned that a type B e person is someone who or that likes people a lot and likes to socialize. That fits me pretty well, I think. Classes start on Wednesday and I'm getting to know the other people in the dormitory which I live. No, where I live. Or if you want, you can say, uh, in which I live or that I live in. It's pretty exciting being here. That's it for now. I'll call in a week or so. Love, Alice. How many is that? 
Is that 10? Yeah, okay, great. We got uh, any questions about this page? All right, that's the homework. We finally finished it. Uh, <laughs> all right, so this week we're going to be talking about coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions are the simplest way to connect two complete sentences. In this kind of sentence structure, I live with Amy is a complete sentence. I is a subject, live is the object. I live with Jack, also a complete sentence. To combine two complete sentences, you need, in the simplest way, you need a comma and a coordinating conjunction. There are not many coordinating conjun conjunctions. There are only a few choices. Basically, these seven. Uh, they each represent a logical connection. And means that the two sentences go together, but means the two sentences go in opposite directions, or means you can only choose one sentence. So means the first sentence is the cause, and the second sentence is the effect. Four is the reverse. The first sentence is the effect, and the second sentence is the cause. Yet just means but. There are certain situations where you can't use the word but. Um, they are not very common situations, but they do exist. And so if you can't use but, you have to use yet. Finally, the word nor is the negative version of and. It is the negative version of and. It is not the negative version of or. Nor and or are not related. So, OK, let's plug in uh, one at a time to see what kind of sentence we get. I live with Amy and I live with Jack means I live with both Amy and Jack. I live with Amy, but I live with Jack means even though I live with Amy, I also live with Jack. Like maybe Amy and Jack hate each other. Maybe you don't expect me to live with both a man and a woman. So the two sentences go against each other. Uh, in this case, we might add two, right? I live with Amy, but I live with Jack too. Or maybe, you know, I spend three days a week with Amy and four days a week with Jack. I don't know. It's not expected. Third one, I live with Amy or I live with Jack. I can only choose one. I live with Amy, so I live with Jack. Which means that Amy and Jack live together. So if I live with Amy, I must also live with Jack. Living with Amy is the cause. Living with Jack is the effect. I live with Amy for I live with Jack. Reverse. So because I live with Jack, therefore I also live with Amy. So, OK, these two options, right? So or for. Uh, if I use so, Amy, living with Amy is the cause, which means that the person I'm talking to knows that uh, Amy, basically. So when I tell this person, oh, I'm living with Amy, Therefore, I'm also living with Jack. It's explaining to that person that Amy lives with Jack. If I do the reverse, then the person I'm talking to knows Jack. The cause is usually the information that people know. So I'm telling this person the new information that I'm living with Amy because I live with Jack. And when I say because I live with Jack, 
the person I'm talking to will suddenly understand why I'm living with Amy. Uh, yet just means but, right? We talked about this. Um, nor has some special usages. Uh, it has to connect. It's a negative and, right? So and connects two positive things, nor connects two negative things. So we have to turn this negative. The other limitation is when an English sentence begins with a negative word, it's just like a question. You have to move the first word of the verb phrase to the front. If the verb phrase only has one word, like live, this is the only word in the verb phrase, you have to insert do. So in this case, I'm telling the person, I don't live with Amy and I don't live with Jack. I don't live with Amy, nor do I live with Jack. Uh, so those are the six main logical operators. That now, there are a few special rules um, in addition to nor. For example, um, OK, let's see. Um, you can also use, OK, yeah, let me talk about but first. But can sometimes mean except for. So in this case, if you use but to mean except for, then you probably want to avoid using but as a conjunction to avoid confusion. Uh, sorry, but just means except. So, but for my grades, I am successful in college, but that is a big but. OK, this means that but for means except for, right? So when I say it's a big but, I mean it's a big exception. So here you have three different uses of the word but, it could get confusing. So in this case, it would make sense to change this to yet. OK, um, to demonstrate another special rule, we need to talk about conjunctions used inside of a sentence. We've been talking about connecting two sentences with a comma in front of the coordinating conjunction. But in fact, a coordinating conjunction coordinates two things, xie tiao. It could be any two things, as long as they are equal in status. They are parallel, ping xing jie go. The highest level is here. You're connecting two sentences. But you can also connect within two sentences. I live with Amy and Jack. This is the most common kind of usage inside the sentence. Well, you can also say, I live with Amy and work with Jack. Here you are connecting live with Amy and work with Jack. Verb plus preposition phrase, verb plus preposition phrase. These two are equal, so you can connect them using a coordinating conjunction. And then you have, you can also connect different kinds of sentences. Uh, sorry, um, different relative clauses. We saw that in one of the practice questions. So, I live with Amy who likes to bake, but who doesn't like to eat cookies. Okay. 
So here the but is connecting this relative clause with this relative clause. They are both relative clauses, they are parallel. And this is why I suggest you keep the second one. If you take this one out, it still makes sense. Who likes to bake but doesn't like to eat cookies? But it would be clearer if you repeat the relative pronoun just to make sure the reader knows you're talking about two relative clauses. This is especially important when you have really long sentences. And the second relative clause may be very, very far from its original noun. Uh, I can't think of an example now, but you can imagine, right? If the first relative clause goes really, really long, three lines, and then you have a conjunction, and then you have a verb, you might not catch that it is connecting to the relative clause all the way three lines above. So it makes more sense to always repeat this relative clause. OK, so. You can connect any two parts of the sentence as long as they are parallel. Um, when you have a OK, let me let me talk about the special rule for negating first. I think we mentioned this earlier in the semester, but I'm going to repeat again, so. I don't live with Amy and Jack. What does this sentence mean? Do we know who I live with? OK, how do I ask this? I don't live with Amy and Jack means I don't live with these two people together. This not is negating the and. It is not negating both of these people individually. When I say I don't live with Amy and Jack, it means I live with Amy or I live with Jack or neither. Because it is negating the combination. If I live only with Amy, then I'm not living with Amy and Jack. If I live only with Jack, I'm not living with Amy and Jack. So how do you negate? You have to use or. I don't live with Amy or Jack means I don't live with Amy and I don't live with Jack. So logically, it would be impossible for me to live with both Amy and Jack. Right, because if I negate Amy, then I can't live with Amy and Jack. If I negate Jack, then I can't live with Amy and Jack. So in English, negating a combination, you must use or. OK, so the combination Amy and Jack has two people. If I negate them one by one, it makes both impossible. Right? If I say I don't live with Amy, then you know that I don't live with Amy and Jack. If I say I don't live with Jack, you also therefore know that I don't live with Amy and Jack. But if I say I don't live with Amy and Jack, I could still live with Amy because Amy is only one half of Amy and Jack. Or I could live with Jack because Jack is also only one half of Amy and Jack. Or I could live with neither of them, which would also be the same as saying I don't live with both of these people. So in English, when you negate a group or a combination, you have to negate using or. Negate individually 
So when you put it together, the entire thing is still negated. But if you negate the group, then the individuals might still be there. You're just negating the group. Yeah, OK. Um, so that's something you really should pay attention to. Um, let's see, what else? Nor. You can have SVO, nor do SVO. You can also have I live with neither Amy nor Jack. But in this case, some people will just use or. So either both of these work. Mm, let's see, I should. I should do this. OK, and then one last thing to say, which is. As you know, for can also be a preposition, right? For somebody, for something. So you have to look at its position in the sentence. Where is it in the sentence to decide whether it is a preposition or a conjunction? Especially. If it comes after a comma and comes before a new subject, it's probably a conjunction. Uh, okay, next thing, when you have a list, A, B, and C, I want you to put in this comma. Why? It can help avoid confusion. For example, I bought stock, my Piao, in Procter and Gamble and General Electric. How many companies is this? Procter and Gamble and General Electric. It's actually two companies. Procter and Gamble is one company. General Electric is another company. Um, so for example, if you don't have if you don't have the last comma, it's hard to tell whether Gamble is part of Procter and Gamble or is it part of Gamble and General Electric? But if you have the comma, it suddenly becomes very clear. So when you make a list, always add the last comma. So for example, uh, even negative, right? I don't like uh, planes, trains, or cars. I like to stay home, right? So this is a list of things I don't like. We said that uh, if you are negating, you should use or. So here you have a list of negatives. Don't like planes, don't like trains, and don't like cars. Don't like planes, trains, or cars. Yeah, I think that's all I want to say about conjunctions, con uh, coordinating conjunctions. Um, we talked about so the other kind of conjunctions are very early in the semester. The other kind of conjunctions are subordinating conjunctions. These are words that begin the last part of the sentence. They are words like uh, when, whether, unless, uh, as, owing to, right? The the parts, the words that begin the last like other information part of the sentence. So now you know both kinds of conjunctions. Questions? All right, let's do some practice. 
page 14. Add periods and capital letters when you have to. So basically, where does a sentence stop? There are four questions. I'll give you two minutes. All right, number two, I like to get mail from my friends and family, period, capital I, it's important to me. Number three, we are all connected by our humanity, period, capital W, we need to help each other, period, capital W, we can all live in peace. Number four, there was a bad flood in Hong Kong, period, capital T. The streets became raging streams, period, capital L. Luckily, no one died in the flood. I would also add a comma after luckily, but that's not part of the question. Number five, people have used needles since prehistoric times, period, capital T. The first buttons appeared more than 2000 years ago, period, capital Z. Zippers are a relatively recent invention, period, capital T. The zipper was invented in 1890. Questions? All right, next. Add commas where necessary. OK, it gives you two choices, but I want you to always add the last comma in the list. Uh, what is that? Nine questions? I'll give you three minutes.
All right, let's compare answers. Number two, my oldest brother, comma, my neighbor, comma, and I went shopping yesterday. Number three, Ms. Parker is intelligent, comma, friendly, comma, and kind. Number four, did you bring copies of the annual report for Sue, comma, Dan, comma, Joe, comma, and Mary? Number five, in the early 1600s, the Chinese made wallpaper by painting birds, comma, flowers, comma, and landscapes on large sheets of rice paper. Number six, can you watch television, comma, listen to the radio, comma, and read the newspaper at the same time? Number seven, lawyers, comma, doctors, comma, teachers, comma, and accountants all have some form of continuing education throughout their careers. Number eight, gold is beautiful, comma, workable, comma, indestructible, comma, and rare. Number nine, my mother, comma, father, comma, grandfather, comma, and sisters welcomed my brother and me home. Okay, technically this should be me and my brother. If you are part of the object, you go first, me goes first. But if you are part of the subject, then you go last. The word I comes last. The rule is you should be closest to the rest of the sentence. And number 10, my husband imitates animal sounds for our children. He moves like a cow, comma, roars like a lion, comma, and barks like a dog. Questions? Okay, homework. You're not going to like this. Start on page 15, right? Please turn to page 25. Go to the next page. There is no page number. My fault. Go to the next page. There's still no page number. Finish this page. That is the end of your homework. So please go up to page 25.2. It's a lot, but it's not hard. It's mostly just commas and periods and stuff like that. OK, so that's the homework. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about um, I believe connectors, coordinating, I'm sorry, conjunctive adverbs, words like therefore, however, moreover, that kind of thing. Okay, see you next week.